Today's episode of the Gone Fission Nuclear Report is brought to you by Floor. We're building a better world. Welcome to the Gone Fission Nuclear Report, your one-stop source for all the latest news from the Department of Energy's Environmental Management Program. Now, here's your host, Michael Butler. Hello, and welcome to the Gone Fission Nuclear Report. Today is Monday, May 8th, 2023. We're covering all the news from the Department of Energy's Environmental Management Program across the country. We thank our friends at FLOOR for being presenting sponsor for today's episode. Experimental Breeder Reactor 2 was a sodium-cooled fast reactor designed, built, and operated at Argonne National Laboratory at the National Reactor Testing Station in Idaho. Initial operation began in 1964. Over its lifetime, EBR2, as it was known, generated over 2 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, providing a majority of the electricity and also the heat to the facilities of the Argonne National Laboratory West. It was shut down in 1994. Custody of the reactor was transferred to Idaho National Laboratory after its founding in 2005. Here's more. This is the control console of the experimental breeder reactor number two. Here, isolated on this Idaho desert, is one of the most advanced and complex atomic power facilities in the world. From this nerve center of EBR2, as it's called, scientists and technicians monitor the intricate processes of nuclear fission and gather information that will guarantee a plentiful supply of atomic power for the nation and the world for centuries to come. This reactor is different in many ways from the nuclear power plants that supply some of our homes today with electricity. It's unique because it creates more atomic fuel than it uses. Dr. Harry Monson, the project manager for EBR2, can tell us how this is possible. This reactor actually does create more fuel than it uses, Norman. That is not to say, however, that it's a perpetual motion machine. We still can't create something from nothing. Basically, with EBR2, we are developing methods of extending our nuclear fuel reserves. We do this by converting an inert material not usable as a fuel to plutonium, which is a man-made nuclear fuel well suited for use in power reactors such as this one. Crews at the laboratory recently completed transfer of the reactor's fuel from wet to dry storage, meeting a key milestone in a settlement agreement between DOE and the state of Idaho. Wet storage consists of storing spent fuel rods in underwater pools, which shield the radiation and allows the fuel to cool and its radioactive properties to disperse before being disposed of. Dry storage allows spent fuel that has already been cooled in the spent fuel pool to be surrounded by inert gas inside a container called a cask. The casks are typically steel cylinders that are either welded or bolted closed. Cask systems are designed to contain radiation, manage heat, and prevent nuclear fission. They're designed to resist earthquakes, projectiles, tornadoes, floods, temperature extremes, and other scenarios. The heat and radioactivity decrease over time while the casks are under constant monitoring and surveillance. Officials of the department and the state, including Idaho Governor Brad Little, convened at the lab recently to celebrate moving the EBR2 fuel from wet to dry storage, an achievement completed nine months ahead of a December deadline, and to thank the employees who made it happen. Here's Governor Little. We also know the Department of Energy has, despite challenges and setbacks, worked hard to live up to its commitment to address the waste here at the site. And today, the cleanup is a success story, not only for the INL, but for the entire DOE complex. Today, we recognize the completion of spent fuel wet to dry project, like the accelerated retrieval project that was also completed safely and ahead of schedule. None of this would have been possible without the foresight of one of my mentors, Idaho Governor Phil Batt, who passed away earlier this month. 
He and others finalized the 1995 Idaho Settlement Agreement, which plotted a path for the remo removal of transuranic waste, high-level waste, and spent nuclear fuel. I want to thank everyone associated with the spent nuclear fuel wet-to-dry project for keeping Governor Batt's legacy alive and the Idaho Settlement Agreement relevant to this day. And also on behalf of the citizens of Idaho, I want to thank each and every employee for continuing to protect our precious Snake River Plain Aquifer. That aquifer is literally the lifeblood of our state. I'm pleased to offer my congratulations on all the successes and accomplishments we're celebrating today, and I believe the best is yet to come. While all of this makes us very proud of INL and our state, what makes us most proud is the way the lab and its staff contributed in enhancing the quality of life in Idaho. Whenever I meet with charitable or community groups in this part of the state, I see lab employees contributing and working to make a difference. This lab is a national asset, but it's people who work here that enrich the lives of Idaho across the state. I would especially share my appreciation. I'd also like to thank Ike, Katie, Connie, Ty, and John, and the entire EM, NE, and Idaho Environmental Coalition team for achieving this incredible milestone. We'll hear more from Governor Little and other dignitaries later in today's podcast. We'll have more after this from Floor. Today, the Gone Fish and Nuclear Report is celebrating a milestone with employees of the Idaho National Laboratory, the Department of Energy, and the state of Idaho. The last cask of EBR2 fuel from CPP-666 wet storage pool has been placed on the transport trailer and is ready for transfer to the fuel conditioning facility at MFC. This completes the spent nuclear fuels wet to dry project mandated in the 1995 Idaho Settlement Agreement. The spent nuclear fuel wet to dry project epitomizes the word teamwork. For more than two decades, an agency, companies, organizations, and most importantly, skilled, dedicated people work together for a common mission. Thanks to everyone involved, the spent nuclear fuel is in a safer, more secure configuration with additional benefits to the Snake River Plain Aquifer, Idaho's greatest natural resource. Crews safely retrieved, handled, repackaged, shipped, and placed in dry storage thousands of spent nuclear fuel elements, some dating back to the early days of the Cold War. Employees completed this work scope with the precision, professionalism, and perseverance that the work demanded. The ingenuity that employees displayed was second to none. Innovative fuel storage and transfer technologies arose. Engineers, criticality safety and thermal analysis experts, operations personnel, and fabricators developed a new fuel bucket that allowed 25% more advanced test reactor fuel assemblies to be stored in the same place. This innovation has extended the useful life of CPP-603. Operations, fuel handlers, and fabricators teamed up to develop a mock-up that allowed crews to practice fuel cask movements prior to transferring experimental breeder reactor 2 fuel to the materials and fuels complex. As we close the chapter on this spent nuclear fuel wet to dry project, we focus on the challenging work to come. Because of your dedication, you have well positioned the Idaho Cleanup Project for future success. Thank you for a job well done. Spent fuel from the historic experimental breeder reactor 2 has been successfully moved from wet to dry storage, meeting a key requirement of a settlement agreement between DOE and the state. 
The 1995 agreement is an historic and unique one in the Department of Energy complex. As part of the agreement, the state agreed to allow DOE and the Navy to bring limited quantities of spent nuclear fuel into Idaho for the next 40 years. In return, DOE agreed it would not ship certain types of spent nuclear fuel to Idaho, and that it would expedite the treatment and remo removal of waste and spent nuclear fuel from the state, including the EBR2 spent fuel. Then Governor Phil Batt specified three guiding principles in connection with the agreement. First, Idaho must not become a default repository. Second, DOE must address waste already in Idaho. And third, instead of a cleanup and close down site, the INL must become a viable national laboratory. DOE has a long standing commitment to honor the agreement as recorded in this exchange between Congressman Mike Simpson and former Energy Secretary Stephen Chu in 2010. Will you guarantee me that it is the intent of the Department of Energy that they will meet the milestones in the governor's agreement to the state of Idaho? Uh, and does that include having all the SNF removed from the state of Idaho by the year 2035? So the answer to your last question, the answer is a very simple yes, we intend to fulfill our obligation. As noted, officials of the department and the state, including Idaho Governor Little, gathered at the lab recently to celebrate moving the EBR2 fuel from wet to dry storage, an achievement completed nine months ahead of a December deadline, and to thank the employees who made it happen. Ty Blackford, chief executive of Idaho Environmental Coalition, opened the ceremony. So it goes without saying, as we look around this room, that it takes hundreds of people to accomplish tasks like this. Decades in the making, a lot of hard work, more than just a couple of people that do all those things. It includes engineers, it includes operators, maintenance craft, fabrication personnel, the list goes on and on and on, right down to even procurement and contracts. It takes all of us to accomplish these tasks, and it takes dedicated effort. These are not nine to five jobs. These jobs go seven days a week, 365 days a year, to make sure that these jobs can be done. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you all today. And I want to thank you, Ty, for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, thank you for your partnership, your personal partnership that we've had, as well as the partnership that we have between our organizations. It's outstanding, and I want to thank you in front of everybody for that partnership. I also want to thank the state officials for coming, uh, particularly uh, Governor, Governor Little, Attorney General Labrador. As, as you may all know, they have unique responsibilities uh, for both cleanup and the research and development missions that we have at the laboratory. Uh, and so I very much appreciate their partnership uh, and their support for what we do here and what this kind of accomplishment enables for our research and development mission here at the laboratory. I wanna thank the congressional delegations and their staff for, for not just coming, but for their support uh, and participation in what we do here. It's incredibly valuable. We're here today to celebrate a specific accomplishment, as you all know, the completion of a settlement agreement commitment of wet, to, wet transfer of the spent nuclear fuel on the site. And I'm pretty sure it's March 28th, and the deadline was December 31st of this year, so nine months ahead of schedule. Congratulations and kudos for that. And as Ty said, it takes a lot of people over, over decades to achieve this accomplishment. It's great to see all of you here, but I'd also think about all the people that have probably retired and moved on that participated and contributed uh, to, this, to this accomplishment. This is an accomplishment, of course it's important for the Idaho National Laboratory, it's important for the state, it's important for the nation in terms of demonstrating how we can responsibly manage our spent nuclear fuel and related materials. 
I'm really proud of all of you in the Idaho Environmental Coalition, all the people and staff in the Department of Energy, as well as the INL staff that contributed to this achievement. Collaborative efforts included things like acquisition of a new cask and transportation systems to provide redundant capability. I think I might have saw that cask out here behind us. Implementation of risk reduction activities that expanded storage capacity in our fuel conditioning facility uh, and increased the number of shipments, and that's part of how we were able to do this ahead of schedule. Implementation of a new strategy to take ATR fuel directly to uh, here to INTEC to 603 and kind of avoiding wet storage altogether. And importantly, a lot of those materials, or at least the EBR2 spent nuclear fuel materials that were transferred over to the fuel conditioning facility have been and are in the process of being processed to recover that high enriched uranium, to downblend and clean that to high assay LEU and turn what would have been waste materials into fuel for new advanced reactors, uh, both on this, well, particularly on the site. And so that's a huge, huge, I mean, positive story that I hope people understand, repurposing what was considered waste, which was originally being processed to be disposed of, to, to meet a critical, actually urgent need related to advanced reactor demonstration and deployment. So that's just a fantastic story in my mind. Of course, I'm a nuclear engineer, so I care a lot about that. But the partnership between Idaho Environmental Coalition and the laboratory has led to this success, which will also enable future accomplishments and success on this laboratory and again, related to our mission for nuclear energy. So again, it's an honor to be here. I appreciate very much the opportunity but then lastly, I guess I, I wanted to say, and, and I know Connie and Ty have probably heard this from me uh, many times, I don't think we celebrate enough the successes related to cleanup on this site. I, I don't think the community, many in the state and many around the nation realize how much has been accomplished over the last couple of decades here. We just, you, you all just kind of do it quietly so I really applaud the department and IEC for hosting this celebration of this, of this uh, accomplishment. And I hope it raises visibility, uh, particularly around our communities in the state, in terms of the many, many accomplishments uh, related to the cleanup mission on this site. So with that, I would like to now turn it over to my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Katie Huff. Katie is the Assistant Secretary for the Department of Energy's Office of Nuclear Energy. Prior to that, she's had roles in the Department of Energy, including Senior Advisor to the Secretary of Energy, uh, as well as the Principal Deputy before she became the Assistant Secretary. Katie has a long understanding and deep understanding of nuclear energy, but also nuclear fuel cycles and spent nuclear fuel materials. Prior to joining the Department of Energy, she was Assistant Professor, so she might, she might might teach us, um, at uh, the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, where she led a research group on advanced reactors and nuclear fuel cycles. So it's an absolute pleasure to work with her and to introduce her now. Dr. Katie Huff. Thank you, John, uh, and thank you to all of you. It is an absolute honor and a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Office of Nuclear Energy at Idaho National Laboratory, our flagship Nuclear Energy National Laboratory, and say to you all, congratulations. Oh my goodness. <laughs> thank you to those of you who have helped, all of you in this room and outside this room, across the complex who have helped the Department of Energy complete this tremendous milestone Nine months early is never something I get to say. You have made this possible. Accomplishing something ahead of schedule is an amazing accomplishment given the complexity of Idaho National Laboratory's spent nuclear fuel inventory and the amount of collaboration and coordination required. These kinds of accomplishments dedicate the real dedication of our Idaho National Laboratory and Idaho Cleanup Project employees the Office of Environmental Management, uh, Naval Reactors Idaho Branch Office. We are so lucky to have people like you here at Idaho National Laboratory accomplishing these missions. Idaho National Laboratory, of course, has a long history of nuclear energy research and development. 
And it's an integral part of our nation's energy security and future energy transition. The most, this most recent effort has led to the successful transfer, of course, of INL's experimental breeder reactor to nuclear fuel from wet storage to dry storage. And a portion of this, as John mentioned, is being treated to produce critically necessary, crucial, high assay, low enriched uranium source material here with the world-class capabilities at Idaho National Laboratory where it is possible to do just that in support of our advanced reactor fleet that is coming online in the very near term in the coming decades to support our transition to clean, secure energy in this country. Recovery of the precious high assay, low enriched uranium material is absolutely necessary as we think about those advanced reactors and their fuels, and it is a perfect example of how spent nuclear fuel with sustainable management and attention to the fuel cycle can be a resource, not just a waste. So as a result of your excellent performance, dedication to the Department of Energy mission, you are continuing to move the Idaho National Laboratory into the bleeding edge of the future and allowing us to be part of the future of nuclear fuel research and development to help DOE to meet its commitments to the state of Idaho and the people of Idaho, as well as the environment that we share in this world. So for all of that, on behalf of the Office of Nuclear Energy, thank you. All right, and now it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you uh, Connie Fleur, manager of the Idaho Cleanup Project, my boss. What are you trying to say? Can you guys see me over this thing? <laughs> you can hear me good? So those of you who know me know I get a little giddy over these kinds of of uh, events, but I'm not sure I could follow that kind of an exuberance. That's pretty, that's pretty significant there. So thank you, Ty. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Uh, the Idaho Cleanup Project contractor team, the Idaho Coalition, IEC, is the cornerstone of this achievement, building on a long history of success here in Idaho. And I was just talking to Ike at lunch today, and he made the comment that this is actually his third trip to Idaho in the time that he has been the leader of the EM program. So I think we're only the second site where that is true. So that's a pretty significant accomplishment for the workforce here. But this is an exciting day. I'm very proud of my team's accomplishment. Thank you all for coming to celebrate the completion of the removal of spent fuel from the wet storage nine months ahead of schedule. Um, we're grateful for the support of the Naval Reactors team and the Idaho National Laboratory for their collaboration on this achievement. It would not have been done had we not all worked together, especially in the last few months where we really had to do some innovative things to be able to make sure we could get these last few retrievals out of there. Uh, if you walk through the doors behind you, those overhead doors, you would actually see the site of the empty pool. And that is a testament to the hard work, vision, and collaboration of all of you in this room and all of the organizations with which you're associated. And the long list of supporters that we have had, as have some others have noted, most notably the workers of the Idaho Environmental Coalition and their predecessors, FLOR, CWI, BBWI. Uh, Mayor Casper and other community leaders have been great supporters of this effort, State of Idaho, congressional leaders and staff, the Shoban tribes, the EPA, and the Department of Environmental Quality. I'm honored to be among you today to share in this achievement, so please accept my heartfelt gratitude. I look forward to celebrating future achievements with you as we fulfill our environmental responsibilities to this great land. And it's now my privilege to introduce Ike White, the Senior Advisor for DOE's Office of Environmental Management. Thank you, Connie. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be here personally to thank the entire Idaho team for an outstanding job once again. The completion of the wet to dry spent nuclear fuel transfers was made possible with a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of collaboration from many people in the decades since we signed the Idaho Settlement Agreement. Considering all of the hurdles, including working in a pandemic for three years, it is really a remarkable feat and it's a testament to our greatest asset 
the men and women at cleanup sites who actually make this really difficult and demanding work happen. So thanks to all of you for, for your commitment in getting that done. These events really are my favorite kind of event because I not only get to meet all of the folks who make this work happen in the field, but I also get to join you in celebrating accomplishments that really move our cleanup program forward. One of the things that Connie did mention was all three times that I have been in Idaho has been to celebrate getting one of our regulatory milestones done ahead of schedule. So thanks to all of you for making that happen. These high priority commitments help us protect the Snake River Plain Aquifer. They achieve commitments we've made to the state of Idaho and they demonstrate that all of us working together can in fact get these things done both safely and efficiently. The environmental management mission is very large, complex and it's difficult as all of you know. And our successes are built by people overcoming the day-to-day -day challenges until our completions and our commitments are met. I very much appreciate the collaboration we've had within DOE, thanks to the Idaho National Laboratory and the Office of Nuclear Energy for their partnership with IEC and the cleanup program in making this particular milestone happen. And I also appreciate the ongoing teamwork that Katie mentioned that we have with naval reactors and with nuclear energy as we work together to meet future commitments and challenges here at Idaho. To all of you who made all of this work happen, thank you very much for your dedication, your expertise, your professionalism, and most importantly, thank you for helping us protect the environment. To the people who oversaw, regulated, and enabled this work, thank you for working with us to create an environment where we can all be successful together. As we close this chapter, it's only fitting that we have Governor Little, Attorney General Labrador, Councilman Ladd Edmo from the Fort Hall Business Council, representatives from the Idaho Congressional Delegation, and mayors and other community leaders here today. All of you have worked hand in hand with our leadership at the site here to bring a project like this to a successful conclusion. It's very much an honor to have distinguished guests like that with us here today. The laboratory here in Idaho is fortunate because we're surrounded by strong state and local partners who are aligned around advancing cleanup and planning for the future. And for the cleanup program, that is particularly important. It's not an accident that the areas around the country where we have the greatest progress are areas where we have the best alignment between DOE, tribal nations, state regulators, affected communities, and others. It speaks to the power that you can have when you have a shared vision and mutual goals that we're working on together. So again, I want to extend a special thank you to the state of Idaho and the leadership that's represented here today. I look forward to celebrating other accomplishments with you in the future. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Governor Little, who will be followed by Attorney General Labrador. Governor, over to you. I'm a little shorter. No, no, no offense. Uh, well, thank you. I, uh, when, when Ty was given the safety briefing, it would have been shorter, but given there's two politicians talking, you might get something on your shoes. So uh, uh, I'm delighted to be here. I, uh, it was a, a, a year ago when we celebrated again a milestone uh, that we made and, uh, it, it, and it was a great celebration. I, I have been coming to the lab since the early 80s as a, as a business person, uh, somebody interested in public policy and the constant. Uh, we've had quite a few contractors, we've had quite a few lab directors, uh, but the one constant is the dedicated people uh, that do the hard work day in and day out uh, to get this um, mission accomplished. <clears throat> I wanna commend everybody uh, for what you've done. Uh, you've had an enormous project on, you know, in my field, in the confidence of Americans and Idahoans about the work that's done here. Uh, the fact that in a safe, clean, uh, reliable uh, quest to have nuclear energy, uh, not only for the United States, but for the world, INL continues to be a leader in testing and demonstrating new nuclear technologies that will provide the power <coughs> that this generation and the next generation will need. INL is also a critical contributor to national security capabilities. Obviously, there's the rich history that exists out here on this piece of real estate 
with the Navy and the nuclear power plants and the new roles of protecting the grid, critical infrastructure, and cybersecurity. And who could forget uh, the nuclear battery fuel uh, that was developed here by the lab uh, for the Mars Curiosity rover? Uh, it's just one of the, not only statewide, not only regional, not only in the world, but literally in the galaxy. We also know the Department of Energy has, despite challenges and setbacks, worked hard to live up to its commitment to address the waste here at the site. And today, the cleanup is a success story, not only for the INL, but for the entire DOE complex. Today, we recognize the completion of spent fuel wet to dry project like the accelerated retrieval project that was also completed safely and ahead of schedule. None of this would have been possible without the foresight of one of my mentors, Idaho Governor Phil Batt, who passed away earlier this month. He and others finalized the 1995 Idaho Settlement Agreement, which plotted a path for the remo removal of transuranic waste high-level waste and spent nuclear fuel. I want to thank everyone associated with the spent nuclear fuel wet-to-dry project for keeping Governor Batt's legacy alive and the Idaho Settlement Agreement relevant to this day. And also on behalf of the citizens of Idaho, I want to thank each and every employee for continuing to protect our precious Snake River Plain Aquifer. That aquifer is literally the lifeblood of our state. I'm pleased to offer my congratulations on all the successes and accomplishments we're celebrating today, and I believe the best is yet to come. While all of this makes us very proud of INL in our state, what makes us most proud is the way the lab and its staff contribute to enhancing the quality of life in Idaho. Whenever I meet with charitable or community groups in this part of the state, I see lab employees contributing and working to make a difference. This lab is a national asset, but it's people who work here that enrich the lives of Idaho across the state. I would especially share my appreciation. I'd also like to thank Mike, Katie, Connie, Ty, and John, and the entire EM, NE and Idaho Environmental Coalition team for achieving this incredible milestone. Congratulations. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here today. I'm always grateful and honored to be with you all. But I'm particularly excited about being here today to celebrate with you your accomplishment and recognize this major milestone under the Idaho Settlement Agreement. As I walked in, I saw a couple of friends, and I saw an old friend, Eric Simpson, who I have known for many years. And if you know Eric, he's a very excitable young man, right? And as I asked him, you know, tell me about how you feel, tell me about how the people here feel, he goes, this is a big deal. This is really great. And I agree, this is a big deal. And I'm excited for you. And I congratulate you for your efforts and for the work that you do for the people of Idaho and for the people of the United States. I'd like to first congratulate each one of you for the work you put into this project, because it is admirable. I'd also like to commend Connie, Floor, and Ty for managing this project. Connie, you should be very proud of your work. When I've toured the INL before, this is my third time at, at this site, I've always been impressed by your professionalism, by your dedication to your work, and your attention to safety and environmental protection. Your hard work has certainly paid off. Crews have retrieved all experimental breeder reactor two, spent nuclear fuel from wet to dry storage. Because of your dedication, this project was completed, as we have heard several times, nine months ahead of schedule. As you can imagine, this doesn't always happen in government, so we should celebrate when a government project is completed ahead of schedule. All of you have set a high bar for future cleanup milestones, and you should really be proud of the work that you have done. The accomplishment we're celebrating here today is significant, 
because it gets us one step closer to another settlement agreement milestone. This shows that Idaho is responsible about dealing with spent nuclear fuel. Of course, we have challenges ahead, such as working with Congress to establish a permanent nationally, national geologic repository. But in the meantime, I think we really should take note and we should be ready to have a serious conversation about interim storage. And Idaho needs to lead this conversation, and we need to think about how we can have a bigger role in that conversation. Thank you again for the work that you do. Thank you for all you do every single day to make Idaho a better place. I look forward to ce celebrating even more milestones with you. May God bless you, and may God bless this state. Mm. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Matthews. I'm the Idaho Deputy Chief of Staff for Senator Risch, and we thank you for having us here. I'm with Catherine Hitch from Senator Crapo's office. And uh, the congressional delegation has entered into the congressional record um, a, a statement from the, congressional, from the congressional delegation about this milestone that has taken place in the cleanup at INL. And just to give you a little historic background on the congressional record. Um, from the beginning of, of our nation, basically, uh, they have recorded the um, proceedings and the official proceedings of Congress. Um, it was under a couple of previous names, the Annals of Congress, uh, Congressional Globe, and in 1873, it solidified around the name Congressional Record. And that keeps track of all of the official proceedings of the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives. And that gets then stored or recorded into the Library of Congress where it is there forever, basically, or at least until hopefully, hopefully forever, because I want our nation to last forever. And so it will be there if you ever need to look up any hysterical, historic, not hysterical, but, but historical, um, um, uh, events or legislation or major milestones like this particular milestone, you can look it up in the congressional record. And I remember back in the 1990s, I'm old enough to remember when this settlement, it was not only Idaho news, it was national news, and it, it is um, very wonderful to see, and I know the senator, our senators feel like it's very wonderful, and our delegation that they, that Idaho has met those milestones that were set out in that settlement agreement. And so they've recorded that in the congressional record and Catherine Hitch from our senior senator's office will be reading that statement. So thank you for having us. Thanks, Mike. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, um, but I will just read a part of it that I think that the senators would like us to share with you. They said, thank you to all those involved in this momentous occasion, especially the exceptional and highly skilled employees involved in this project for advancing and accelerating the cleanup at the INL and protecting Idaho citizens. So you're all mentioned in the congressional record forever. And thank you for inviting us to join in this celebration with you. Thank you all very much for your comments and thank you all for coming here and celebrating with us today and mostly thank you for coming here and honoring the employees of of the IEC and BEA that accomplished this task together and I want to emphasize that again you did it together not apart not as a conflict but as a team as a whole we are very proud of you. We are honored to be here today uh, to honor your accomplishment. Uh, and I would say I speak for all sitting up here. We are humbled today to be in your presence. Thank you very much. 
Again, give yourselves another round of applause for a job very, very well done. Today's episode of the Gone Fission Nuclear Report is brought to you by Floor. We're building a better world.